Hey, hey, it's Kevin from BlenderBit. In this video, we're going to be going over the camera. Ready? Let's go. The camera in any 3D software is a representation of an actual camera in the real world. And it does a pretty good job of copying the look and feel of real cameras. So I'm going to show you basically how to use a camera. First thing I'm going to do, I'll just create uh, Suzanne. She's a good subject. And then I will right click on the camera. And you'll notice as you scroll around, you see this camera is kind of pointing at Suzanne, but you can't really, you know, you could kind of figure out where it is and what it's looking at. But with it selected, if you hit zero on the number pad on the keyboard, okay, your keyboard number pad, you hit zero. You're now looking through the camera. You can see this blue highlight kind of becomes your, your view and all this other stuff gets grayed out. And if you scroll around now, you'll notice something really strange happens. You get back off the camera, right? This kind of freaks a lot of people out when they first begin because they don't quite understand how this is, how this is set up. So if you select this and you hit zero again, you go over this little plus thing over here, this little plus tab, and you come down here and you say lock camera to view now when you scroll around you're actually it's like you're holding the camera and anywhere you go you're moving with the camera if we go over here to this camera icon we have all the controls for the camera so we have a focal length okay we have i'm, I'm going to pull this out a little bit so you can see this better Okay, so we have focal length, we have shift, we have clipping, we have camera presets, we have the sensor size, right? and we have all sorts of other stuff here. Safe areas, or if you turn that on and off, you can see that these little lines come in to show you camera safe areas for text and action and things like that. I like to leave those on, and there's quite a bit of, of things. I'll, I'll just leave that as, as is here. Um, custom properties which we won't go into we have depth of field which is really cool so say I, uh, I create another version of Suzanne and I throw her back here in this view okay we can go back to camera right click on the camera go back to this little camera icon ah it disappeared there we go and we can play with depth of field okay we could say the focus here would be on this Suzanne and we'll do high quality in the viewport and when we actually go to render you're going to see it emulates the real kind of depth of field that you would see in a real camera so if i were to go here to rendered okay and we're moving around okay if i were to say high quality radius i can go to f-stop Okay, and I can you know, lower the f-stop. It works kind of like similar to a real camera where the wider the f-stop, the, the uh, shallower your depth of field is so you get more blur. Okay, and, and I'll go through that more in, uh, in rendering. But it's a cool feature of the camera and while you're working in cycles in the renderer, you can, you can get a pretty good approximation. And in Blender 2.8 that's coming, you'll see EV is even more powerful. But this is really cool to work with, so you can kind of start seeing, you know, almost real-world representation of your scene. Okay, so let's just turn back cycles to turn cycles off again. Okay, and we'll go back to solid. All right, and we can leave this on; it's fine; doesn't matter. We also have the sensor size. Okay. So we can go to, you know, full full sensor size on a, on a regular SLR 36. Okay, we can go to focal length. Okay, focal length here controls your length. So we can go all the way from say, you know, 16, which is pretty wide angle, to I mean, 300, which is you know extreme telephoto. Okay, and you'll notice just like in the real in a real camera. When you're at telephoto, the background and the foreground compress together. Whereas when you leave telephoto, okay, and you go back down to say, you know, 35 or 24, or you know, nifty 50, okay, you could see that it's 
very similar to what a real world camera does. And it also gives you presets. So you have Ari Alexa, which is a very popular camera for digital film. There's uh, Canon, there's GoPro, you have Nikon, Panasonic, RED, you have the, the Epic, RED 1, 3K, 4K, Galaxy, Sony's, iPhones. Okay, so you can emulate quite a few different looks of different cameras. I don't I don't know exactly how accurate this really is, but it's it's from what I see, it's a pretty decent representation of these real-world camera presets. And like we did with animation in one of the last videos, you can animate the camera, okay? With the camera selected, you can animate your view. So, let's say at frame 1, you want to be here. So, with the camera selected, okay? I'm going to go here to location rotation and well, I'll just put location and rotation you don't really have to worry about scale so much on camera here for now and I'll keyframe this at 1 and then say at frame 24 I'll turn on uh, well, I'll, I'll do a kind of a rotation okay and then I'll hit keyframe and now you can see that we have the camera rotating Okay, doing a little sweep. Okay, so take this video, go in and play. And uh, one thing I wanted to see that I didn't really tell you guys about last time is once you set these keyframes, you can see that on this panel, you'll see that these uh, these change color. That denotes that there's there's actually a keyframe. Okay on this so when you're between frames it's green when you're on a keyframe it turns that kind of yellowish kind of pukey color you know, don't really it's not a very flattering color but it tells you that those have keyframes on them okay so like every other video go in play okay play around with this start getting a feel for the camera it, it's really useful especially when you start setting up your scenes okay if you're just going to be you know modeling and selling models or whatever uh, it's not too useful, but you still, you know, you're still going to want to have decent renders to show this stuff off. And if you're obviously doing motion graphics or you're doing animation or you're doing projects for people, the camera is pretty much your best friend. All right. So go in and start playing with it and get a feel for how it works. And like everything else, like other, all the other videos, go and play. And if you like this video and you learned something, please hit like, subscribe, and I'll just keep making more. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.